Hey everybody, welcome to the character creation series. In this segment, I'll be explaining how to sculpt in ZBrush. If you haven't already, click import to bring your OBJ file into ZBrush. The first thing you're going to want to do is press Ctrl D to add a few subdivision levels. Increasing subdivision levels increases the number of polys a model has. When sculpting, ZBrush literally moves the polys around under the brush, so as you can see, the more polys you have, the more detail you can sculpt. I highly recommend finding several reference images of characters, anatomy, or whatever you're making just to refer back to while sculpting. Generally, you're going to want to move around the model fairly quickly, blocking in major muscle groups and giving the model form. It's important not to spend too much time in one area as this can lead to an unbalanced level of detail. When blocking in detail, I generally stick with the clay tubes brush. An important thing to remember is that when you press the X key, everything you sculpt will be mirrored along the X axis. This is great in the beginning because you're going to want both sides to be equal. Keep in mind, however, that nothing in nature is perfectly symmetrical, so later on when you're detailing, you're going to want to add some variation to each side. During the sculpting process, it's essential to make use of the smooth brush. Hold down the shift key to smooth out any rough, blocky areas you've sculpted. As you sculpt, you'll realize that it's really a process of adding and blocking in detail, then smoothing it out. Sometimes when sculpting, you'll need to actually cut into the model. To do that, press and hold the Alt key while sculpting. It's important to switch back and forth between high and low division levels while sculpting. Lower division levels are great for adjusting the overall shape of a model, while higher division levels are great for detailing. When sculpting areas of the lips that need to be flattened out a little bit, it's good to use something like the Trim Dynamic Brush. Right here you can see where I'm masking out certain parts of the hand by holding down the control key. I'm then moving unmasked parts of the hand by using the move tool at the top of the page. When you've reached a high enough subdivision level, detailing becomes very easy. Using a brush like the standard brush or the clay tubes brush can really make the muscles pop out. Here you can see where I've decreased the brush size and I'm just kind of outlining major areas like the eyelids or the ears and then smoothing over them. A smaller brush with a higher subdivision level can add a lot of detail. By cutting in right here and smoothing over, I'm really defining the abs. For the horns, it's no different. I'm just cutting into it using the standard brush. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps this video up. In the next segment, I'll be discussing texturing this model.